I was flying from New York back to Berkeley, California, which is a long flight, and it was one of those things, I think it was when you feel a little bit like fate is involved, I was sitting on an aisle seat, which I never do when I'm on a plane, and I had these 17 rolls of film that I was flipping through. And there was a woman sitting across the aisle from me, and she was watching what I, what I was doing, and finally asked if she could look at the 17 rolls of film. Anyway, she looked at all of them and flipped through them all and commented on all of them, and when she was done, she handed them back to me, and she said I should take a class in black and white photography, and I should get a job with a local paper. And then she said she was a National Geographic photographer. So, um, to make a very long story short, we stayed in touch, but it, it was a pivotal moment for me. So once this um, National Geographic photographer had said, take a black and white class, I went out, took a few classes, started to feel like I might really have some talent, and I had to go get a good camera. So I went and I bought a Canon, a film camera, an Elan um, EOS, 7E, which was an, an outstanding camera, a prosumer camera. And I learned at that point that the pros were shooting transparencies or slides. This is going back a couple of years. So I was shooting slides like the rest of them, but I shoot a lot. And that gets expensive. Um, I tend to be a late adopter, but it was becoming clear that a lot of the, uh, you know, the movement is towards digital. I still had this thought in my mind that I could take this black and white class and go to work for a paper, but what I was hearing is that now all the photojournalists were shooting digital wirelessly in the field and emailing those images back into the newspaper. So it was becoming more and more clear to me that whether I wanted to change or not, I didn't have opinion about it, it was time to start moving towards digital. So if you read my artist statement, one of the things that I say is I have been shooting with film and I've been shooting digitally and I challenge my customers and my clients when they come in and look at the images to tell me which have been shot with film or digital. This is Cruising Highway 35 Kawasaki Ninja style. Um, we actually spent about two hours trying to get a certain um, effect. The effect is we wanted him crystal clear, sharp and in focus, but we wanted to show motion. The big problem that you have um, shooting cars and motorcycles is if you get those guys in focus, you've frozen the motion and you can't really tell whether they're actually standing still or whether they're moving. So we wanted to get this motion right here. You would get the same effect whether it was film or digital. The fact that I shot digital, the only benefit here was that I was able to stop the car and look at my images and realize we weren't getting the effect and we were having to try something else and we just kept trying it. But as far as the actual result, in my mind, no difference. So this is called Spring Mustard and Dancing Trees. I have a few of these images where we, I captured the mustard this spring and everyone keeps saying, oh wow, did you go up to Napa? Well, as a matter of fact, this is a few miles south of my house. This is down on the way to Gilroy. And it just goes to show that we have a lot of beautiful images that are really close by. So this I call Two Bulls. This is actually just shot down in Morgan Hill. So this is called Quincy Engine Number 2. She still runs. This is an engine that was taken out of service in 1950 and then last year up in um, the Niles Canyon, way that we have, Canyon Railway that we have here, they put this back into service. So I've been brought up around a lot of people that love trains and I like trains a lot also. There's something that takes you back to an earlier time um, when people would ride freight trains across the country and things like this. But my goal was to get that classic shot of that train just coming chugging at you with the steam just billowing up. You see it in the old westerns all the time, you know, charging across the prairie. But that's, that was the feel that I wanted, those old locomotives in their element doing their thing with steam flying everywhere. And um, so I do have a few shots where I've tried to capture that.